uh, introducing themselves. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. Welcome. I'm seeing a lot of familiar names here in the chat uh, from all over the state. I'm seeing folks from Tucson here in Maricopa County. I see Ian. What's up, secular fam? <laughs> uh, and we got people from all over. So this is really great. Uh, welcome, everybody. Let me get through my little spiel. Although most of you have heard it before, we are Secular AZ. And, um, you know, we're your voice for the separation of church and state. And we are boots on the ground fighting, whether it's at a local school board meeting, a city council meeting, or at the legislature. We are there to organize and stand up and speak out at every level of government. So we're a nonprofit. Um, of course, uh, we will take your donations. We are both a C3 and C4, which I'm going to actually, since maybe some of you don't know a little bit of history about Secular AZ, I thought it might be nice to provide a little bit of that history as well. Um, next Friday, we'll be back on our regular guest speaker series, and we will be speaking with Jen Fifield to talk about the 2024 elections. So uh, I see folks are introducing themselves, and that is fantastic. Uh, let me go back into the chat here real quick. There we are. Okay. Awesome. Uh, oh, hi, Bonnie uh, from LD2. Mars from Earth is here. Love to see it. Uh, we have uh, Jude and Chandler, Cindy, Fountain Hills. Oh, Cindy and Fountain Hills. I saw your city councilor at the legislature uh, Wednesday, Alan Skillicorn. He seems like a super serious elected official. And that is sarcasm. Um, so anyway, let's get right to it. Uh, yeah. Oh, Sunny Slope. Ken, that's right. We are neighbors. Oh, good. Suzanne is here. Some members of our border here. Fantastic. Glendale in the house. All right. So let me share my screen uh, uh, and prepare yourselves because uh, it's not all great, unfortunately. Um, so... I have the right one on. Okay, good, good. Let's see. Let's get this slideshow started. Okay, so um, it is February 9th, 2024. Uh, and uh, it's beautiful springtime weather. We've got all kinds of events going on here in Arizona. Waste management, uh, Phoenix Open. I've never been to that, and I don't plan on going. I've had too many friends tell me how random strangers have thrown up on them at the Phoenix Open. So I have no desire. Plus, I don't like golf. So if you're into that, no offense, but I just don't want to watch golf or people throwing up. So, all right, let's get to it. Um, so again, to provide just a little bit of background, because while you may join our secular speaker series, maybe you don't know everything that we do. So we are a 501c3, C4. Um, I love the origin story of Secular AZ because it just shows just how um, hopeful the founders of this organization uh, are and were, because in 2020, they decided to uh, start a 501c4 that is a, a political nonprofit organization at a time when, this is 2010, so at a time when Arizona uh, had a supermajority of Republicans. And, you know, we're, non, we're, we're nonpartisan, but we all know who the evangelical extremists tend to be, right? So I love that story. Three years later, they were like, you know what? There's a whole bunch more that we can, than we can do besides just like lobby and educate at the Capitol. Let's expand this. And so three years later in 2013, they also formed a 501c3. So for those of you who do become members and donate, that means if you donate to the C3 that your taxes, uh, that you can deduct it on your taxes. Um, we, like I said, we don't focus on candidates or parties, but we do focus on the issues, specifically any issue that violates the establishment clause and, um, you know, jeopardizes the separation of religion and government. So we focus on healthcare, reproductive rights, education, discrimination, which is mostly LGBTQIA discrimination, but there's all kinds of discrimination, um, tax policy and religious expression and the freedom of people to be able to express their religious beliefs, which I'll be getting to a little bit later today as we discuss uh, SB 1279, which is a bill introduced by uh, Senator Hoffman that would not allow the satanic temple or any satanic displays on public property. Uh, meanwhile, there is a Ten Commandments display on public property at the Capitol. So uh, anyway, um, let's see, we, like I said, we do advocacy work at the Capitol, we do grassroots lobbying, we, we belong to several different coalitions, whether it's about 
reproductive rights, whether it is about uh, LGBTQIA issues uh, or, or other issues, we, we get involved where we feel like we need to get involved. Um, we also handle formal legal complaints. I just spoke with someone on our uh, legal team yesterday and they said they already for this year have 10 complaints. And at that rate, chances are it'll be more like 100 complaints by the end of the year. Um, and I mean, typically, I think, I think, and I don't want to misquote our legal director, but I think they said that it's like, it, normally it's about 35, maybe. So what we're seeing right now is uh, an extremist uh, evangelical group of people who feel emboldened by the Supreme Court, uh, by the former president, and by, you know, the various policies and laws that have chipped away at that wall separating uh, church and state. Um, let's see. And then, of course, we have events that are both in person and virtual. Hopefully all of my QR codes work. I did test them out today. And if there's anything happening in the chat, just so you know, I can't see it yet. So I'll get to it. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? So like I said, we do have some events. We have these discussions right here uh, where uh, we've talked about different themes. We've talked about secularism and incarceration. Uh, about religious trauma and indoctrination, uh, gun worship, uh, homelessness. So if there is a topic that you would really like to hear about, like that may not even feel like a, a specifically secular topic, you notice that, you know, incarceration isn't necessarily something that we would get involved with, in with secular AZ, but we want to learn more about it. And we want to learn more about the difference between folks who have a religious, um, you know, purview compared to folks who really care about the separation of church and state and how those folks approach it. So um, we also have been working on bolstering our support for school board candidates. And um, we also have a calendar, which I, that is the calendar right there. So if you scan that, it'll take it, take you right to our calendar. Our, our board president, Whit Johnson, found this great program where all of our secular organizations can post this page and let folks know what they've got going on all over the state of Arizona. So if you uh, are interested in forming a little group, uh, we just had a, our newest group is the, oh boy, let me get it right. It's not the Sholo Seculars, it's the White Tank Seculars, I think. I hope I'm getting that, or no, the White Mountain, White. Anyway, I'm sure Lindsay's putting it in the chat. So it's, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun to join the, the secular movement. Uh, we're a lot of fun people. Uh, we just had our secular summit recently, and I'll tell you what, you know, atheists, agnostics, humanists, they know how to party. Um, okay, let's see. Going on in my slideshow here. Oh, boy, we're getting to it already. Well, that's great. Excellent. I love reliving nightmares. It's my favorite thing. Um, okay, so I am not going to go into a whole bunch of detail here because um, this was really last minute. I, I found out yesterday afternoon that I would be um, you know, handling this kind of uh, forum. So I'm just gonna go through a few things that have happened this past week. And again, if there is something that you really want to talk about or you have knowledge about, uh, put it in the chat and I will make sure that I get to it after we look at this slide for just a little bit. So um, SB 2310 is a bill that I'm, and, very, and many others are very concerned about because it is a bill that would define grooming. And while, and while this seems like maybe a benign thing, um, there is a movement right now to kind of uh, take over the word grooming and twist it into something that it is not. And this word groomer is being you know, thrown about in a very casual way. I myself have been called a groomer and uh, as somebody who actually had suffered sexual abuse as a minor, it's an incredibly offensive and triggering thing to hear somebody call you the thing that you are a victim of. Do you know what I mean? So there's, uh, there's, there's that. And so there are a lot of great groups who are working on this bill, but the trouble with this one that I'm concerned about is that we have a lot of people who aren't evangelical extremists who are supporting this bill. And it's because I think that they are afraid of being um, you know, targeted as somebody who wants people to be able to get away with child sex abuse, but it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, now, this is another bill, SCR 1013. 
And there is a difference between 101, the, uh, the SCR and the SB. SB stands for Senate bill. SCR, uh, and if, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, um, but SCR stands for Senate Concurrent Resolution, I believe. And what, what this means is that because they know that their bills cannot make it past Governor Hobbs's veto stamp, they are um, putting them right to the voters. So where citizens can go ahead and put together a, a ballot resolution, right, that, that we an initiative that we all get to vote on, like the um, the Abortion uh, Access Act, that the, the bill that's going through right now. Um, that one comes from us, the voters, you know, they have lawyers who put all the wording together, it goes through all these different hoops, you have to get all these different signatures, and then it goes to the voters. Now, because Katie Hobbs is using her veto pen, uh, they are trying to bypass that. And I counted today, uh, and there are dozens and dozens just on the Senate side. Um, we've got a few resolutions that are coming out in November. And if you don't have a subscription to the Arizona Agenda Substack, I highly recommend it because they talked very specifically about those bills and the process. And so since they've already done that job, I am not going to do it again. Um, but it's really an informative publication and is all things Arizona. I recommend it. And today they specifically talked about the difference between the two types of legislation. Um, so SCR 1013, you may remember that uh, Senator John Kavanaugh, who seems to be completely obsessed with children's genitalia, it's very alarming. I don't understand why this obsession with the genitalia of children is being normalized by Republicans, because I think it's really, really creepy. Um, so last year, he had a couple of bills that would have uh, turned teachers or anybody working in a, in a, uh, in a school into uh, you know, a felon. I don't know if it's a felony charge at this point, but essentially a teacher who acknowledges a child's pronouns and preferred names could be in trouble. Um, and it would outlaw being able to call a child by their preferred pronouns, allowing them to use the bathroom that matches their gender identity, all of the same things that he tried to introduce last year, but because Governor, Ta Governor Hobbs vetoed, that means that, uh, you know, they're all doing this workaround thing. So this is going to go directly to the voters. I feel confident given national numbers of this uh, anti-trans trend that it will be struck down by the voters. However, these people have a ton of money to sink into these kinds of campaigns. And if you follow along at all, they do not um, tell the truth all the time. So there's going to be a large campaign if this makes it pass. So what we're asking you folks to do right now with this bill specifically, if you want to protect our trans kids and our trans individuals, because it also, I believe, extends to adults uh, not being able to use the restroom that matches their gender identity, um, then you're going to want to call your senator. And specifically, if you are in uh, Ken Bennett's district, which is LD1 in the Prescott area, he really needs a phone call from you. And in fact, if you live in a district where you have a, uh, you know, a Republican or an evangelical extremist representative, right, you're going to want to get in touch with them and especially uh, the Republican side. And again, nonpartisan, but we know where these bills are coming from. Um, uh, I'm going to skip to SCR 1015 um, and then the partner bill that goes along with that 1195. This one is so fascinating to me. Hold on just a minute. All this talking is giving me a dry mouth. Um, SCR 1015 and SB 1195. And I just put, I, we just put out our sub stack today and I talk a little bit about it, but this bill is coming from Senator Anthony Kern, uh, who is a fake elector among other things. Uh, uh, he put forward this bill or this uh, resolution 1015 that he's calling the anti-Marxism bill, but it would not allow public funds to be spent on um, uh, any kind of ride share or public transportation. <laughs> um, uh, it would not allow for, uh, oh, it would, it would not allow for anybody to limit the number of articles of clothes that you can own because that's an issue said no one ever. Um, let's see, it also uh, would um, not allow for, oh, th they took this one out. 
<laughs> this is really, really funny because in the original form, this bill actually said that uh, public money cannot be used to treat water that has ever touched any fecal matter. And in an amendment, they took that out because all of the water that we drink has been touched by fecal matter. As someone who went down the uh, Colorado River in the Grand Canyon, I can tell you that accidents happen, whether it's humans, animals, birds, or whatever. So they did take that out, um, but they also put in wording that would not allow for public funds to be spent on um, promoting uh, eating bugs. So if you do read my Substack, you might have read before that there is this conspiracy theory out there that, um, you know, the Marxists are going to make you eat bugs. Um, so, again, super serious stuff, but this puts it in front of the voters. And again, they will promote this bill and in, in, I'm, I'm predicting a very dishonest way if it actually makes it to the voters. So, again, we need your engagement. If you're not on RTS yet, get on RTS. I'm going to go ahead and recommend, too, for those of you who don't go to the Sunday happy hours with Civic Engagement Beyond Voting, they do a fantastic job, much better than I'm doing today, at getting you prepped for what is going to happen in the coming weeks, specifically at the legislature. So, again, I'm, I'm hopeful that Lindsay's putting a link in there so you all can get signed up. Um, you can also reach out to us and we'll get you signed up for RTS, but I know that CEBV does that work as well. And their Sunday happy hours as, long, as well as the Arizona agenda are like required uh, reading and attendance for anybody who's concerned about what is going on in Arizona with regards to our legislature. Um, okay, so <laughs> the one that I went down for on Wednesday uh, was SB 1279. And this is a bill coming from Senator Hoffman that would ban satanic displays on public property. I'm not going to show this whole video, but um, Eric, uh, who's a staff with us, he did a really great job of clipping down the really important parts. And I just I just want to show you like the first five or 10 minutes because I want to hear from you as well. So real quick, because I think this should be required. Everybody should have to watch this in the state of Arizona. Everybody. Just because if any of us were to behave like Senator Hoffman does in his workplace, we would be fired. Here we go. Extremely clear bill. Uh, satanic memorial statues, altars, or displays, or any other method of representing or honoring Satan may not be displayed on public property. This is known as this, this bill is known as the reject escalating Satanism by preserving essential core traditions or the Respect Act. So with that, let's open debate on the Respect Act. Senator Mendez. Mr. Chairman, I so that I don't get accused of questioning your motivations, can you explain why we're singling out one religion? It's not a religion. Satanism is not a religion. Satan is in implicitly antithetical to religion. Mr. Chairman, I think we have members from the public who will probably speak against that they, assertion. They certainly might disagree. However, the antithesis of religion is Satan. So mm. do you have another point to make? Well, so, I mean, I guess, so the motivation is just that it's against your religion? It is a desecration of our public property in the United States of America and in the state of Arizona for a satanic display, memorial, statue, altar to be on public property. And then, Mr. Chairman, I guess I'm trying to understand the motivation for that. Is it because it's insulting to your religion? Is it because you don't like the aesthetics of it? I'm trying to understand why. The motivations is that it's a desecration of our public property. To, it's a Mr. Chairman, it's a desecration of public we've seen, property. We've seen the situation. Uh, the reason for the Respect Act is we've seen this situation play out now, unfortunately, in other states. And it is absolutely abhorrent that a satanic memorial statue, altar, or display, or any method or or representation honoring Satan is displayed on public property. But again, very, straight, straight, very straightforward motivation. Because it offends you your, your religion. It, but it's a very straightforward motivation. I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I don't. Because and that's why I'm asking questions. So you're offended because it, it offends your religion, and that's why we're no, banning the the. No, sir, I'm not offended. That's what I'm trying to get from. It's that's a desecration of a public property in the in the state of Arizona. Look, we have more respect for our public property. We have. So can we all just agree, first of all, that um, Senator Mendez is an absolute treasure? Uh, and for those of you who don't know, he uh, he's one of the only openly atheist folks who show up at the Capitol. 
uh, um, and his wife, who is former legislator from the same district, LD8, also openly uh, agnostic, atheist, whatever, you know, she's also, um, uh, her family, she has still family in, in Palestine. So with good reason, she does, she's not a big fan of religion and government. Um, I want to just skip real fast because this was particularly terrible. Um, and again, like the way that this man treats his constituents, the voters of this uh, state is really abhorrent and should also I. be called out. Yeah, this bill in no way infringes on anyone's First Amendment rights. <laughs> this bill says that satanic memorials, statues, altars, or displays, or any other method of representing or honoring Satan may not be displayed on public property. That does not strip you of your right to free speech. It does not strip you of your right to assemble. However, it does say that we will not put an altar or we will not honor Satan. We won't put a memorial or a statue to Satan. Excuse me. This is not public comment time. This says that we will not allow those things to be on public property. It does not infringe your First Amendment rights. What does infringe people's First Amendment rights is when atheists, many of like the folks who stood here and spoke in this committee, through organizations like the Freedom From Religion Foundation, send nasty grams. And we have members in the audience cheering that organization on. And they send cease and desist letters to pastors who might be asked to come open a meeting with prayer, a prayer, whether it be in Allah's. I will say that when he said, like, he, he looked at me when he said that, and he's probably thinking of uh, our legal team who frequently sends nasty grams. Oh, come on. Name or Jesus Christ's name. But they send cease and desist letters to try and prohibit free speech. The people that the, this audience is cheering on are the ones trying to infringe spe free speech. This happened to me. I was going to pray at the East Valley Prayer Breakfast. And guess what? I sure as hell did pray at the East Valley Prayer Breakfast because you will not trample my right to free speech. But your right to speak is very different from the ability to post an altar to Satan on public property. You know, I find it ironic that in Iowa, you can knock over a satanic display and you go to jail for that. <laughs> but yet at the U.S. Capitol, you can have a gay sex orgy in a government building and there is zero consequence okay that's enough i did not have gay sex orgy on my on my 2024 bingo card as things that elected officials would say the reason why he brought this up is because because there's another bill i don't even remember the name of it and it would ban anybody from filming any kind of sexual act in a government building <laughs> so it happened at the at the dc capitol the guy who did it was a staffer who was let go. Um, it's not a problem, but of course, we're going to focus on that. Uh, you know, meanwhile, I just heard something on KJAZ the other day about um, how our uh, the number of unhoused people in the state of Arizona, specifically in Maricopa County, has just exploded. But we're going to talk about, I guess, prohibiting explosions in government buildings. I don't know, whatever. Um, okay. So Satan caused the orgy. Your guys' notes are really funny. Hold on. I need to be able to focus. Okay. All right. So uh, here we go. There are, yes. And, and let me just go through the comments real quick here, but yes, the hypocrisy, it's blinding. And this is the kind of stuff that happens all day long. Uh, earlier in that particular, uh, Senate committee hearing, there was also a bill that the, that was sponsored by uh, Senator Shauna Bolick, who replaced Steve Kaiser in LD2 and is now running against Judy Schwiebert in LD2. Uh, she had a bill called the Lemonade Stand Bill. And it was all about, you know, easing restrictions for kids who own businesses, right? 
again, it seems like a benign bill, but then when the Democrats started asking questions about parents who use their children for their YouTube channel or their TikTok and whatever, those were just kind of brushed aside. So again, tough, really good questions coming from the other side, but you know, the evangelical extremists, they don't want to hear about logic and reason. But so there was a bill that would allow um, you know, kids to have less restrictions. There was an adorable little kid that, that was there to talk about his, you know, 3D printing that he does. And the the folks on the day has kept talking about, you know, we need to let the parents make these decisions. We need to let kids be themselves and chase their dreams and all this stuff. And then, you know, a couple of committee hearings later in education that doesn't include parents of trans kids, right? They cannot give the, those trans kids the the kind of health care that that they that they see fit for their children. That they can't raise their children in a way that that makes sense to them and their family's values. Um, and and the kids can't be themselves, even though in that government committee hearing they were saying that we should let all kids be themselves. So hypocrisy is basically the standard uh, for for most of our elected officials. Um, let's see. Yeah. Hypocrisy, double standard. Satan absolutely caused the orgy. <laughs> um, I guess if we were spending money on politicians as free speech, we might as well call orgies free speech too. satanic orgies. <laughs> They're going to clip all this video. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Yes. And TST, the satanic temple, they were great. Uh, a sh really big shout out to TST for being able to, in such a short time, organize folks to not only show up, but to speak. There were a couple of people there who uh, were veterans. They were so good. They were really good. And yes, uh, the Shauna Bolick lemonade bill did make it out of committee. It'll probably go to the floor sometime next week. Uh, <laughs> Mars, I stayed home so I wouldn't throw up on all any of y'all like at the waste management open. Thanks for that, Mars. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. Look, it is, it is already half an hour, only half hour into today's session. And I've learned Republican fetishes include children's genitalia and feces and water. It's true. You can't make it up. Throwing up is free speech. <laughs> okay. Yes. Janice, you're right. TST, big shout out to TST. Your mobilization, so, so impress impressive. Okay, so I'm going to zip through these. If you have questions, I'm more than happy um, to, to answer any questions if you've got them, and I'll do my best to monitor the chat. Um, so I just whipped through some things today. But again, on Sundays, CEBV, they're going to have all of these. They'll also have their weekly, which is put out by uh, Melinda merkel Iyer. If, if you can throw that into the chat, the weekly is what I use, like Bonnie said earlier, to go through and really just like, okay, what do I need to pay attention to? Okay, so SB 1006, K-12 divestments, that one is all about not allowing um, any schools to be able to partner or have any investments in an organization that provides abortion. So basically, I'll, uh, just to, to put a to explain how this would work. So for example, when I was on my local school board, uh, we approved comprehensive sex ed. Um, and I, you know, I think originally the curriculum for the program that we use, I think it's called Our Whole Lives or OWL, uh, was like, you know, there were groups that were involved in creating that comprehensive sex ed, that medically, you know, accurate uh, comprehensive sex ed. And because Planned Parenthood at one point was like part of that process, because of course they're experts in how to prevent pregnancy and STI, right? Um, the, you know, uh, this bill, I believe it's Kern. It could be Hoffman. I can't remember. Could be Peterson. They're all terrible. Um, but that one is going to be on Senate finance. And it would, and it, you know, again, Governor Hobbs has promised that she is going to veto things that seem to, you know, not be solving any real problems or seem to be discriminatory in nature. Um, Senate 1298 is about the internet and harmful material to minors. It just seems to me like overreach. There's already a lot of, you know, controls that parents have, and this would limit people's ability, companies ability to do business in Arizona if they don't have these, you know, specific protections. It's just overreach. And this one's serious, y'all. SB 1628, which they are calling the women's rights bills, the, or the, the women's right bill um, or women's bill of rights. I'm sorry. 
Um, what this really is, is an LGBTQ erasure bill. That's what it is. Uh, you know, this is a, this is um, the evangelical extremists in the House and the Senate in Arizona for decades now have blocked the equal rights amendments in the state of Arizona. Um, but now they're saying that this is a women's bill of rights, but it really is, um, you know, not allowing for all, you know, all of the same anti-trans kinds of stuff. And it is, you know, just another way for them to control and assert their power and dominance over our most marginalized citizens. And, you know, when they start policing what restroom trans people can go into, guess what happens more often than not? It is gender non-conforming people who end up getting harassed, right? Like imagine uh, a woman with short hair, uh, maybe she's wearing men's clothing, right? Um, maybe, you know, she just doesn't like to wear skirts. I know when I was a little girl, I didn't like to wear skirts because I like to climb trees and the jungle gym and stuff like that. You know what I mean? But it would allow for somebody to stop and harass that person. So when people start thinking that they know what somebody's gender, like, you know, like what they were born as, what biological sex they were born as, the real victims end up being uh, other members often of the LGBTQ community, you know, uh, gender non-conforming or non-binary folks. Um, so this is a real danger. And I encourage all of you to reach out to your representation and let them know um, that this is not something that you support. Um, there's a detransitioning bill uh, that would require uh, medical coverage for folks who want to detransition. The, the number of Trans people, first of all, is incredibly small, and the number of trans folks who decide to detransition uh, is anywhere between 0.5% of that population to about 3% of that population. So while, I mean, I think that everybody's medical needs should be covered, this is just another way to demonize trans folks, to, to you know, turn it into something nefarious or that that people walk away from having huge regrets. In fact, most trans people are incredibly happy with their decision decision to transition. Um, let's see. Oh, now this one's not necessarily uh, secular in nature. However, this is about letter grades in schools, but it's it is. Uh, thank you for that. Haley Robinson just shared uh, an article from Erin Reed, and she's another substack that I would definitely um, I, I subscribe to her as well because her reporting is really important. She does some of the best reporting on trans issues in the United States, if not the entire world. So thanks. Good recommendation. And abortion every day is another good one. I know. Um, okay. So where were we? Letter grades. This is not necessarily overtly a secular bill. However, religious schools do not have to adhere to any kind of accountability whatsoever. No testing, um, no standards, no nothing. Um, let's see, 1472, I believe this one is Peterson. It's DEI restriction. DEI stands for diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's become like the latest boogeyman after, you know, CRT and BLM or whatever, like the three letters that scare them the most, right? Um, so they don't want any, they don't want any organization to be able to force DEI training, even though every study shows that DEI training actually is good for companies. Um, and people like Mark Cuban, Cuban uh, you know, one of the most wealthy and successful people in the United States is a huge fan of DEI and affirmative action because they do work for organizations. Um, let's see, this one, uh, 1731, it's about public comments. Uh, I, I absolutely oppose, oh, by the way, yeah, it all says oppose, oops, sorry. Um, public comments, this would allow for there to basically be dialogue during public comments at school board meetings and city council meetings. That is not what public comments are for. In fact, it is a business meeting that is open to the public, but it is not the public's meeting. You can absolutely go and express uh, what you what you want. You can schedule a meeting with your city council, or your school board member. You can send an email. You can show up. You can speak at public comments, right? But during public comments, imagine if we had to get into a dialogue with, hold on, as a matter of fact, give me a second. Let's just skip forward real quick. Imagine if we allowed for a dialogue with somebody who has these kinds of notions.
I'm beginning 2024 with a few re-highlight words of the Declaration of Independence. Empowered by our creator, that is God, creator God, the first words of the Bible in Genesis. In the beginning, God created. Inalienable rights, that's impossible to take away. Life, liberty, and happiness. Abraham Lincoln called the Declarations of Independence a rebuke and a stumbling block to tyranny and oppression. Board members, let's go over 2023 of your tyranny and your oppression. Mass, harmful, unlawful, mandates are not laws. Congress makes laws. How about the number two? Boys want to be in the girls' bathroom and shower. That is debauchery. Acts of the flesh. It is selfish ambition. Read Galatians 5 in the Bible. Quit pushing satanic evil agenda on our Peoria school girls. Genesis 1.27, I have quoted it before, and it ends with males and females. God created them. Two genders, two bathrooms. If you think you need a third for the worldly A to Z letter people, you can use the teacher's bathroom in the schools, and you can mark them man-made. Leave our girls alone. How about the after-school short shots? Okay, I, like, I've had enough. I hope you too have also had enough. Um, like, you know, could you imagine though, if if that person would be allowed to ask questions or have a dialogue with the board? I insist that the people that I'm dialoguing with share my reality. And, you know, for an unpaid position, a volunteer public service position, I am not gonna engage with people who believe in fairy tales and magic. Um, so this is a terrible bill. Um, yes, the Lord did make it to uh, bathrooms. And yes, it is the 11th commandment, I'm pretty sure. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. Oh, come on, Castine, you can do this. You can do it. All right, good. Um, okay, there are two bills, SCR 1019 and HCR. Again, for those of you who maybe don't know, if it comes from the Senate, it begins with a one. If it comes from the House, it begins with the number two. And so what they do is put together mirror bills so that they can, you know, hedge all their bets, make sure that it's going to be going through to, on to both uh, chambers. And these are just anti-affirmative action uh, resolutions. Um, oh, this one's rich. Do you all remember when the Republican Party stood for, uh, you know, local control, small government, um, fiscal responsibility? Remember those days? They're a thing of the past um, because now this state loves to preempt any kind of progressive municipality in Arizona. Uh, think of Bisbee when I think it was they were trying to ban plastic bags and the and the and the legislature said no. Um, and then like when Flagstaff uh, increased their uh, municipal uh, minimum wage, they tried to create another law. They do this all the time. Check this out. Uh, HB 2375 would ban basic income guarantee. I don't know if any of you are familiar with this, but this is a program that's being um, tried out in different places throughout the world and throughout the country and has had wildly successful results. Typically, it involves um, giving everybody within, say, that zip code or that 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 um, you know that township or whatever. Bam, y'all get a fifteen hundred dollars a month or two thousand dollars a month, and overwhelmingly, these studies show that it doesn't make people lazy. In fact, what it does is it allows them to not live paycheck to paycheck anymore. It allows them to be able to get uh, childcare for their kids or to pay for their health care if their uh, you know employer doesn't pay for it. It allows them to make the rent since just about everywhere in the United States we're facing these crazy housing prices that nobody can afford. Um, so to preemptively ban basic income guarantee is a terrible idea, first of all, and it takes away the, the, the voters, the citizens of the state of Arizona to make those decisions for themselves in their own backyard. 
Um, so I definitely am opposing that one. And yes, somebody did bring this up earlier in the chat. Uh, Anthony Kern, I believe it was, uh, dropped yet another radical bill that would allow for the Ten Commandments to be in uh, schools. And so I um, don't think that's a good idea either. Um, yeah, let me get down here. Okay, let me read some of these chats. Okay, the bathroom conversation is very entertaining for sure. Jacqueline is saying, why is it always about girls? Why is it never about teaching our boys to be better? Why are our girls always the victims? How about we stop that narrative and start raising everybody better? Amen, Jacqueline. Um, <laughs> Ian says, it's not called the straight bull. It's called the Bible, sheeple. Okay. All right. Hold on. You guys are too much. Yes, he does remember when things happen to be like this. Okay, rhetorical set of questions. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Um, sorry. Uh oh, this one is also rich, SB 1477. Um, this one is also Anthony Kern. And this one is the to establish a political bias grade challenge department for our universities, I guess. I I like I said, I whipped through these bills really quick. So it could be universities, schools. I'm not sure. Like I I'd have to really go and get the details. If anybody on the chat has already researched this, please feel free to do so. Um, and then there's uh SB 1469 again. I know that this isn't a secular bill, but, it, you know, education is my passion and public education specifically is my passion. I have been in schools where the SRO is really like a member of the faculty and like family. We loved our SRO when I taught middle school in the Creighton School District. Um, he was great. I've been to schools. I've taught at schools where the the SRO never left their office, but seemed to get a little bit giddy anytime there was a possibility of him arresting a student. So, you know, like, uh, and and we've all, we've all heard the reports that there's been no SRO, no cop on campus that has ever stopped a school shooting. Um, at the same time that folks want to get rid of social workers and school counselors and school psychologists, they want to, you know, put SROs in our schools. Um, the SRO program, I do believe does adequately train the the folks who are who want to be SROs, but this bill would allow for these kind of transient SROs for retirees for veterans. I mean, uh, you know, Sonny Borelli is a veteran. I don't want him in my school, right? You know, I believe well, Senator Kern, right? He was on the he was on the El Mirage Police Department, right? Didn't something happen with Anthony Kern in the El Mirage Police Department? Like he would be able to be an SRO. I do not want somebody who doesn't know my kid and who's coming in every other Tuesday or something like that to suddenly, you know, you know, discipline children that he doesn't even know. I just think it's a really, really bad idea. Um, so yeah, he was on the Brady list for lying. I know. Thanks guys for letting me know. Now, because I always try to give hope on Fridays, there's a little bit of hope here. Okay. Um, uh, SB 1483, and I believe that uh, this is Leela Alston, um, maybe, uh, and a few other of our pro-public education folks sponsored this, um, uh, not, not shaming kids who can't afford to pay their school lunch fees, not giving them that crappy little, you know, white bread peanut butter sandwich and and, you know, or withholding food from them. Or in some cases, I've even heard where they take the food, show it to the kid and show them their negative balance and then throw the food in the garbage. That, you're right. But how else will they learn to pull themselves by the bootstraps? It's true. Um, and then SB 1555, uh, this one will be also heard in house education on Thursday. And this is about schools and universities making accommodation for mothers who are breastfeeding. Um, again, for, they had to eat their bootstraps, incredible. Yes, or they maybe they, you know, pawned them so that they could buy boots. I don't know. Um, so in a past life, I was actually a certified breastfeeding counselor and I nursed by my kids for a very long time. Don't judge me um, because they're perfect and, and totally normal. Uh, but this would allow and in fact mandate that schools have to um, allow for uh, pregnant people to breastfeed. 
So I think that's fantastic. And we can throw our support behind some things sometimes, and that's always exciting. All right, so um, a little bit about school board. Oh, you know what? I should check the chat because we can talk about school boards. We do that quite frequently, but I want to see if you all have any questions that I may have mess, missed. So we have one, SB 1469 uh, uh, follows the Florida policy that enforces this type of action. This list of bills strongly continues to support the inequities that exist between white and BIPOC communities and harms LGBTQ2S folks. Absolutely, RJ. Um, okay, so I am proud to report that on the school board front, um, what happened in 2023 after the 2022 election is a lot of these, you know, well-intentioned school boards and school board members you know, with these extremists who suddenly made it on the board. We're like, you know what? We're going to extend an olive branch. We're going to, you know, take you at your word and have faith that you are going to take this role seriously as the clerk or the vice president of the board or the president of the board even. Well, 2023, um, if you do read our sub stacks, you know that uh, the vast majority of those folks um you know, they they didn't they didn't uphold their agreements with regards to decorum and and working together, because one thing that these new board members seem not to understand is that they are not an individual. The second they get elected, they are a member of a governing body. They are not an individual elected official anymore. You're a member of an elected governing body. So once a decision has been made, uh, you know, it's now the policy and everybody should go forward. Uh, if you want to bring it back, there's ways to do that in a strategic and sane, uh, not insane, but a strategic sane way. It doesn't have to be this Molotov cocktail. You know, I'm going to get everybody uh, on my social media pages angry about an issue and talk about things when I shouldn't be talking about things. Um, so what happened? when these boards reorganized, uh, they said, no, sorry, but you are deeply unserious. And so in Peoria Unified, Heather Rooks lost her uh, uh, clerkship. She's no longer the clerk of the board. Now, for some reason, the former president of the board handed it over to another MAGA mom who uh, has zero experience. So that's a whole different thing, but at least we got rid of one of them. And then in Scottsdale, uh, what's her name? Let me get this right. There's two of them. I think it's Corrine Werner, I think. The one that's uh, decided to run against Senator Christine Marsh, who is the 2016 Teacher of the Year and one of our greatest public school champions. So that should be fun for um, that Scottsdale person to run against her. But she also was stripped of her title of clerk. So that's good. Now, um, I, I'm happy to report that both Peoria and Scottsdale do have um, a full slate of candidates. So that is really, really good news. Um, and there are still some districts that desperately need candidates. So if you are interested in, um, you know, maybe running or, or finding out how you can support, by all means, uh, feel free to reach out to us. We are not going to watch that lady again. Absolutely not. I refuse. I do it too often. Come on. Oh, there we go. All right. So here, uh, if you are interested, like I said, uh, you can scan this and you can track what's going on in your district because there are about 300 districts in the state of Arizona, 58 in Maricopa County alone. You know, you probably noticed that I kind of shuffle back and forth between a handful. But if we had more people um, who were able to give us updates, it would it would really help us to be able to block some of these things. Because as you also all know, uh, Alliance Defending Freedom, Turning Point USA, they're right here in our backyard. You know, when everybody was freaking out about the void of leadership in the GOP, um, there, you know, where the void went, it went right into Scottsdale, Turning Point USA, Charlie Kirk. He is the de facto, you know, head of the Republican Party in Arizona. Um, so, yeah, and they are able to, you know, they have a budget much larger than ours. So we rely on our volunteers to help track this because otherwise, We'll never know what's happening in places like Benson, Arizona, or, you know, Casa Grande or whatever. Um, let's see. Uh, and yes, I did say that Kern's sister is running for the Peoria Unified School Board. Um, no, it is not Anthony Kern in, dis in disguise. Not at all. Um, let's see. So, yeah, if you want to track, if you want to summarize, or if you want to support, and by support, I mean support those candidates. 
I feel so bad last night for the folks in Paradise Valley. Last night, Par Paradise Valley had to vote. I haven't even watched the meeting yet because I've been so busy, but they had to vote on closing three or four schools. And that is happening because of ESAs or vouchers, because of charter schools, um, because of housing. Imagine some of the wealthiest dis uh, zip codes are in Paradise Valley, but those folks are now using vouchers. You know, the wealthiest folks in our state are using vouchers and folks can't afford to live in Paradise Valley. Oh, Jacqueline Diwali. She says, I'm running for school board. Jacqueline, where are you running? This is so exciting. Oh my gosh. That was so exciting. Okay. So if you go up to support them. Oh, Catalina Foothills. Yay. That is such great news. I love that. Jacqueline, feel free to reach out to me. Um, it's director at secularaz.org. And then if you want to, we can chat because I'm such a weirdo. I like love school board. It's like my favorite hobby <laughs> in the world. Um, but so yeah, if you want to show up, so thank you to Jacqueline for running, but you can, um, send an email. Like I'm going to send an email to Peoria and say, thank you so much for moving your public comments to the back of the meeting, which by the way, they did. And the people weren't happy, but I was delighted. Um, you can show up. And just lock eyes with that pro-public education person that's sitting at the dais and nod when you see them, you know, because it's tough sometimes when you go to these school board meetings and you don't see any like friendly faces. Um, of course, there's uh, opportunities to speak if you're bold enough to speak. Um, and then like Jacqueline is uh, taking the challenge, you can run. Okay. I talked a little bit about our sub stack. Uh, we have school board updates, legislative updates, legal updates, uh, current events, but we are looking for contributors. So if you are uh, someone who likes to write and it doesn't have to be like in my style of writing or anything else, um, just, you know, like if, if there's a topic, you know, if you wanna, if you have an op-ed just waiting to go out, but none of the papers would take it. And you think this is an important issue that your, your other, you know, secular, uh, friends would like to read about, well, then by all means, we're more than happy to take your writing and review it and possibly publish it on our different publications. Um, okay. And so, of course, uh, you can sign up for our action alerts. Uh, we are going to be also starting our uh, school board community forums. I'm giving everybody a little bit of time to, you know, all the all the folks who have filed or 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 requested a packet and things like that, so we can kind of weed out who is serious about running and who's not, because their signatures aren't usually due until the first week of July or so. So if there's a school board that you really think needs to have a candidate forum, let us know. If there's an issue that's going on with your school board, with your city council, um, with with whatever. Uh, let us know. As I said earlier, we already have 10 legal complaints coming into us for 2024 alone. These bills, you know, that are direct violations of the Establishment Clause, they're all by design. You know, the, the Christian nationalists are emboldened, but they are also breathing the last gasp of their privilege, to paraphrase Andrew Seidel. Um, he says, this is them raging against the dying of their privilege. And so they're going to be loud. They're going to be messy. They're going to be combative. They're going to be irrational. Um, they're not even going to share our reality in most cases, which makes it even more important that we show up um, every opportunity that we have to be able to defend our democracy and our secular government. So I said it might be short today. It just shows that sometimes having the gift of gab is a good thing. Um, in the last five minutes, though, are there any questions? Any other great announcements, like somebody running for school board? Any events that you have coming up? I know that for us, February 18th, our first events that's going to be coming up is the Willow Home Tour. If you would love to hang out at the Willow Home Tour, it's super fun. It's Sunday, February 18th. Um, you could even go and check out some of the beautiful homes in Willow, or you can hang out with all of us atheists, agnostics, and, uh, you know, humanists and, and have a good time. There's other events happening. I believe it's, and Mary Ganapol is here. She's our, one of our board members in Tucson, but the Tucson Festival of Books, which is one of the largest, I think, if not the largest book festival in the United States with 
hundreds of thousands of people and well-known authors from all over the country, all over the world. We have such a good time when we go there. So if you're in Tucson and you'd like to volunteer there, please let us know. Um, so yeah, it's really all I got. It's February. It's lovely outside. I think we're supposed to get more rain this weekend. Um, I'm, I'm going to be doing some weird uh, game tomorrow with a friend of mine who really likes to do all kinds of board games. And it's like a in-person clue game happening in Scottsdale. So I'll be solving mysteries in Scottsdale tomorrow. But if you've got something cool going on that you'd like to share, now is your time. Or if you have any questions. Oh, and I should probably stop sharing my screen. Okay. Um, and I guess, you know, since I already, since I always ask everybody, like, what's your hope? Um, maybe that's just how I'll end it today. You know what gave me hope this week was the the number of people from the satanic temple who showed up to fight against this kind of Christo fascist ideology. So seeing so many people organize themselves in such a short amount of time gives me hope. And to have people like Senator Juan Mendez uh, on our side as well, willing to um, you know announce the presence of TST and to defend the constitution on the regular basis, he also gives me hope. So. I can stop talking now. And uh, I'm just so glad to see everybody. Thanks so much for showing up. Um, and thanks for your flexibility in this last minute change. Next week, we will get back to our regularly scheduled speakers. And it's going to be Jen Fifield. So be sure to join us. Check your email for your latest Substack, stack. Um, and be ready to show up to the happy hour on Sunday for CEBV so that you can RTS for next week. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you all next week.